Good morning. Welcome back to my Learn with Tom Lee. We continue the A-level of Mathematics, Parametric Equation, Chapter 8, Parametric Equation, Section 8.5, Modeling with Parametric Equation. In this lesson, we try to use the parametric equation to model the real world problems. So you can use parametric equation to model the real life situation. In mechanics, you will use parametric equations with type as a parameter to model motion in two dimensions, the x and the y dimension. Example one, if a pen's position at time t seconds after takeoff can be modeled with the following parametric equation. The pen take off from this point, and now the pen is in this point x equal to v cosine theta t and y equal to v sine theta t where t is greater than zero where v is the speed of the pen and theta is the angle of elevation of its path this angle theta x is the horizontal distance traveled and y is the vertical distance traveled relative to the fixed origin the points of taken off when the pen has traveled 600 meter this x is 600 meters horizontally. It has climbed 120 meters vertically. A. Find the angle of elevation, theta. If given that the pan speed is 50 meters per second, find the parametric equation for the pan motion. C. Find the vertical height of the pan after 10 seconds. D. Show that the pan's motion is a strict line. E. Expand why the domain of T t greater than zero is not realistic so we solve the problem one by one from part a to part e part a find the angles of elevation feeder this angle feeders if the band take off 600 meters in x direction and 120 meters in the y direction this angle feeder is equal to the inverse tangents of 120 over 600 so the angle is 11.3 degree. B. Find the parametric equation for the pen motion if the v, if the velocity of taking off is 50 meter per second. So x is equal to 50 times cosine 11.3 times t. That means 49 t. And y is equal to v sine theta t. V is 50 sine 11.3 multiplied by t. Y is equal to 9.81 t. C. Find the vertical height of the pen after 10 seconds. And after 10 seconds, that means t is equal to 10. So y is equal to 9.81 t is equal to 98.1 meter height after 10 seconds. So the pen has climbed 98.1 meters after 10 seconds. And D. Show that the pen's motion is a strict line. We know that x is equal to 49 t and t is equal to x divided by 49. So y is equal to 9.81t. We substitute t equal to x over 49 into this equation, and we get y is equal to 0.2x. Since this is a linear equation, because y equal to 0.2x is a linear equation, the motion of the pen is a strict line with the gradients of 0.2. And question E, Explains why the domain of t, t greater than zero, is not realistic. If t greater than zero is not realistic, as this would mean that the pen was continuing climbing forever at the same speed and the same angle of elevation, is not realistic. One more example: a stone is fall from the top of a 25 meters high cliff with an initial speed of 5 meters per second at an angle of 45 degrees. You can see that with an angle of 45 degrees and from the top of the screen, 25 meter height and fall with an angle with the initial speed of 5 meter per second. The parametric equation x equal to 5 square root 2 over 2 t and y equal to minus 4.9 t square plus 5 square root 2 over 2 t plus 25 meters and t is from 0 to k. Where x is the horizontal distance from the points of the projection, is the horizontal distance. So x is this horizontal distance. y is the vertical distance from the ground and k is a constant. 
y is the vertical distance from the ground at any point of t and k is a constant. Given that the model is varied for the time the stone is thrown to the time it hit the ground, that means when the stone is thrown and until it hit the ground, these two parametric equations is valid. Find the value of k and we are using this parametric equation to find the value of k is the a part. So in a part, find the values of k. The stone hit the ground when y is equal to zero. So when y equal to zero, this means this equation is equal to zero. And we substitute this equation equal to zero and we know that t is equal to minus b plus and minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. We got t is equal to minus 1.926 or 2.648. Because t is always greater than 0, so t equal to minus 1.926 is invalid. So t only can be equal to 2.648. That means the stone will hit the ground after 2.648 seconds. So the k is 2.65. That means t is from 0 to 2.648. And b, find the horizontal distance traveled by the stone when it hit the ground. So t is equal to 2.648 when it hit the ground x is equal to 5 square root 2 over 2 t is equal to 5 square root 2 over 2 multiplied by 2.618 is equal to 9.362 meter. So the horizontal distance traveled by the stone is about 9.36 meter round to two decimal point. After these two examples, we are working with the exercise question number three, number four, number five and number six. So prepare your pen, paper and calculator. We are going to do this four exercise. Question number three, a lever falls from north to south. Lever falls from north to south. The position at type T second of a rowing bow across the lever from west to east. So the bow is from west row to east. Of the lever is modeled by the parametric equation x equal to 0.9 t y equal to minus 3.2 t where x is the distance travel east and y is the distance travel north so x is the distance travel east and y is the distance travel north Given that the lever is 75 meter width, the width of the lever is 75 meter. Find the time taken to get to the other side. We, if we want the both to get from the west to the east, to the other side, that means the both had traveled in the x direction 75 meter. Therefore, we have x equal to 75 meter is also equal to the parametric equation 0.9t. So t is equal to 75 over 0.9 and t is equal to 83.33 seconds. That means the time is 83.33 seconds for the both to cause the lever. Question B. Find the distance the ball has been moved off the course due to the current. Because the current of the fall is from the north to the west. So when the ball is rolled across the lever, the fall will bring the ball to the south with the y direction in distance. Therefore, we want to find the y, so y is equal to minus 3.2t and t from the first part is equal to 83.3 so y is equal to minus 3.2 multiplied by 
second. That means y is equal to minus 266.66 meter. Thus, we have the conclusion the both has been moved off the course by 266.66 meter to the south because the fall is from the north to the south. So we have 266.66 meter to the south. And part C show that the motion of the both is a straight line. See, we know that x is equal to 0.9t and y equal to minus 3.2t. Therefore, t is equal to x over 0.9. And we substitute t equal to x over 0.9 into this equation. We have y equal to minus 3.2 multiplied by x over 0.9. Nine, and we have y is equal to 3.2 over 0 0.9x. Therefore, we know that y is equal to something. Let's say it's k multiplied by x, and this is a linear equation. So the motion of the both should be in strict line because y to the x equation is a linear equation and d we determine the set the speed of the ball since the ball has moved 75 meters in x direction and 266.66 meter in y direction. This of course is to the south. So the total distance is travel of the bow is and we can see that the both have traveled in the direction x and in the direction y. The x is 75 meter and the y is 266.66 meter. So it is a right angle triangle. And, the, and from the theory, we can calculate this distance d, the total distance the both have traveled. So this is d is equal to square root of 75 to the square plus 266.66 to the square and take the square root. We got 277 meter. This is the D, the total distance. And we know that the time taken is 83.33 second. This is from the part A, we know that. So the speed of the ball, if it is constant, therefore we know that the speed is S is equal to the total distance 277 meter over 83.33 second. It's equal to around 3.32 meter per second. Question number four, the position of a small pen coming into land as type T minutes. After it has started its descent, is modeled up by the parametric equation x equal to 80t, y equal to minus 9.1t plus 3000. T is from zero to less than 330. This is the pen start to descend and touch to land, we can draw a right angle triangle. The point where the pen start to land is y from the ground. The pen takes x meter distance
to land to the ground. So where x is the horizontal distance traveled in meter, this is the x, and y is the vertical distance traveled in meter, this is y from the point of starting its descent. Find the initial height of the pen. If the initial height of the pen, that means t is equal zero, and y is equal to minus 9.1t per 3000. So y is equal to 3000 meter. And this is the initial height of the pen when it start to descend. And b, we have to justify the choice of the domain t is from zero to less than 330. If we substitute t equal to 330 into the y equation, we got y equal to minus 9.1t plus 3000. And we have got minus 3003 meter plus 3000 meter. And we have minus 3 meter. That means the level of the airport is 3 meter below the sea level. So from this domain, if t is greater than 0 and less than 330, we have to assume that the airport level is 3 meter below the sea level. Otherwise, the pen will hit the ground hard and everyone die. C. Find the horizontal distance the pen travels between beginning its descent and landing. So the pen needs 330 minutes to land. So we let t is equal to 330 into the x equation. We got x equal to 80 t, 80 multiplied by 330. We have 26,400 meter. That means the horizontal distance for the pen to land is 26,400 meter. Question number five, the path of a dolphin leaping out of the water can be modeled with the following parametric equation. We can see the dolphin lift out the water and jump back into the water. It take these e two equations of x and y. The x is equal to 2t and y is equal to minus 4.9t squared plus 10t where x is the horizontal distance from the pond the dolphins jump out of the water, this is the x, and y is the height above the sea levels of the dolphin, y is the height above the sea levels of the dolphin at type t, and t is the time in second after the dolphin has started its jump, t is after the dolphin has started its jump, t is the type in second. In part A, we have to find the type the dolphin takes to complete a single jump. If the dolphin complete a single jump, that means the dolphin is jump back into the water and y is equal to zero. That means y is equal to zero. And we substitute y equal to zero into this y equation. We got zero equal to minus 4.9 t squared plus 10 t and we have minus 4.9 t plus 10 multiplied by t is equal to 0. t is equal to 0 or minus 4.9 t plus 10 is equal to 0 and t is equal to 10 over 4.9 and so t is equal to 2.0408 seconds. That means for the dolphin to jump one slip is about 2.0408 seconds. 
and part B, find the horizontal distance the dolphin travel during a single jump. So we know that T is equal to 2.0408 seconds for one jump. We substitute this T value into the X equation. We got X is equal to 2T, so it's equal to 2 multiplied by 2.0408 meter. So we got 4.0816 meter. This is the horizontal distance for the dolphin to take one jump. And question C, you have to show that the dolphin path is modeled by a quadratic equation. We know that y is equal to minus 4.9t squared plus 10t, and x equal to 2t, that means t is equal to x over 2. We substitute t equal to x over 2 into this equation, we got y equal to minus 4.9 t squared over 4 plus 10 x x squared over 4, right? Plus 10 x over 2. So we have minus 4.9 over 4 x squared plus 5 x. So this is a quadratic equation. So the path is a quadratic equation with the x value of power 2. And part D, find the maximum height of the dolphin. We have the equation y equal to minus 4, 9, t squared plus 10t. If we take the deviation dy by dt, is equal to minus 9.8 t plus 10. If we let this one is equal to 0, y should be the maximum point. So we have minus 9.8t plus 10 equal to 0. t is equal to 1.0204. This is the time taken for the dolphin to jump to the maximum height. Therefore, if we substitute this t value into the y equation, we have y equal to minus 4, 9, multiplied by 1.0204 to the square, plus 10, 1.0204. So y is equal to 5.102 meter. This is the maximum height the dolphin can jump. Question 6. The cross sections of a bow design is given by the following parametric equation. x is equal to t minus 4 psi t, and y is equal to 1 minus 2 cos t. t is from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. This is the cross section of the bow. We cut it in a cross section. Find the length of the open bow. So we have to find the length of the open bow. See, we know that y is equal to 1 minus 2 cos t, and when t is equal to minus pi over 2, y is maximum. And t is equal to pi over 2, y also maximum. So when t is equal to minus pi over 2, uh, y is equal to 1 minus 0 is 1. And if we substitute t equal to pi over 2 into y, y is equal to 1 minus 0 is also equal to 1. This is the 2 point, y equal to 1 of this 2 point. And if we substitute t is equal to minus pi over 2 into the x equation, we got x is equal to minus pi over 2 plus 4. And we substitute t equal to pi over 2 into the x equation, we got pi over 2 plus 4. So the distance of this and the distance of this one. We add up these two distance, multiply by 2, we got the length of the opening of the bow. The length of the opening of the bow is d. And d is equal to 2 multiplied by 
minus pi over 2 plus 4, the absolute value of it. So it's equal to 8 minus pi is equal to 4.8584. So this is the distance of the opening of the bowl. And B part, given that the cross section of the bowls cause the y axis as its deepness point, as the deepness point cause the y axis here, find the diff of the bowl. We have to find the y in maximum where t is equal to minus pi over 2 or pi over 2 and y is equal to 1 minus 2 cosine pi over 2 or cosine minus pi over 2 is the same because it's 0 so y maximum is equal to 1 and y in minimum where t is equal to 0. Because t is equal to 0, y will be equal to 1 minus 2 cosine 0. Cosine 0 is 1, so it's 1 minus 2 is minus 1. So the y minimum is minus 1 and the y maximum is 1. We add them together, so the depth of the bowl is equal to absolute value of y maximum plus the absolute value of y minimum. So it's equal to 1 plus minus 1 to the absolute. So we got 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So the depth of the both is 2. Muchas gracias. Again, thank you very much for listening to my tutorial videos. And if you need a pilot tutors, for you to get a better mark or better score in your DSC examination in Hong Kong, the SAT examination or just you want to improve your mathematics and English for your college and university study, please contact me at chingtong929 at yahoo.com.hk. My telephone number is plus one eight five two six 如果你希望你的math